Hello, and welcome to Everybody 3D Prints. My name is Ray Shane, and today I'm going to do a review of the FL Sun QQ Delta Printer. If you haven't seen our unboxing or assembly videos, I'll leave links in the description below if you'd like to review those. The Fulson QQ is a Delta-style all-metal printer that comes almost fully assembled. It takes approximately 20 minutes to finish the assembly. It has an overall size of 290 by 350 by 800 millimeters with a print volume of 260 millimeters in diameter by 370 millimeters in height. It's claimed to reach printing speeds of up to 150 millimeters per second. It has a single extruder, automatic bed leveling, and a full color touch screen controller. It also has Wi-Fi connectivity. The Wi-Fi connectivity is provided by a module attached to the MKS touchscreen. I was unable to connect to the Wi-Fi controls in time for this review. I will provide a subsequent review of those capabilities. The QQ is the successor in design to the FL Sun Big Cricket. That ill-fated machine printed extremely well when it was working, but it had a number of design defects that made it very unpopular. The biggest one being noise during operation. FL Sun engineers obviously listened to their customers in the redesign of this machine. The original Big Cricket had a white enamel finish which did nothing to diminish the noise of the machine in operation. The new QQ has what appears to be a powder coat finish. FL Sun also employed vibration dampers in mounting the stepper motors on all three axes. This machine operates so quietly that if you're not watching you won't realize it's running. When printing, the QQ has a supplied build surface, similar to BuildTech. However, in order to level the machine, the build surface must be removed to expose the conductive material underneath. This holdover from the Big Cricket is, in this re reviewer's opinion, the biggest drawback to this machine. I'll discuss the leveling system later in this review. So the first thing out of the box that we printed was the sample vase. Uh, the G-code was supplied by FL Sun on the SD card. It's a common first print object, uh, a thin vase that has some nice optical qualities. It printed flawlessly, absolutely beautifully. Um, just out of the box, no calibration, no changes, no nothing. On the supplied PLA, just a very, very nice print. So to give credit to the creators, the Wave Vase comes from Thingiverse, it's thing number 983438, created by Didierkel, D-I-D-I-E-R-K-L. The wireframe skull pencil holder was created by Phil Nelson, it's thing number 1388237 on Thingiverse. The US coin sorter version 3 is by Pentland Dis Designs. It's thing number 2189166 on Thingiverse. The uh, Dragon comes from My Mini Factory. It's called Dragon slash slash VR Sculpt by Devin Montez. And finally, Angus Debson of Maker's Muse created the Tolerance Gauge. This is his old version. There's a new version with the tool built right in. Either of them can be obtained from Gumroad. The original Big Cricket Delta was a very, very loud printer. It's one of the biggest complaints about it. The QQ, on the other hand, is virtually silent. The only thing you hear while it's printing are a little bit of motor noise, uh, which probably would totally disappear if you wanted to upgrade to the TMC 2130 stepper drivers. Other than that, it's incredibly quiet, much quieter than any of my other printers. As a matter of fact, I tried to do a decibel reading, but unfortunately I have the CR-10 all the way on the other side of the room uh, printing long print jobs, 34-hour print jobs, and uh, I wasn't able to get a quiet enough room to actually pick up the sound from this. It's that quiet. So knowing that G-code supplied with the printer would be optimized for it and um, should print perfectly, I decided to throw a real test at it. I downloaded the Dragon from my mini universe, my mini factory, excuse me, um, and I printed it using the original PLA, 
without doing any tests, any calibration, no changes to the printer whatsoever. I printed a 0 .06 layer height um, and it took five days, five full days of printing, not a hiccup. Uh, the print was oriented at a strange angle uh, by the creator and I used that file again because I was trying to simulate what somebody brand new to 3D printing might do and uh, without knowing better and I just left it set up that way and I printed it uh, with full supports and it was encased totally covered and encased the supports broke off beautifully the detail on the model is unbelievable uh, if you look at the solid areas you can see virtually no layer lines now there are some holes in the mesh and under extruded spots but when I checked the printer later to do the calibration, I found it was under extruding by 5%. So that's not really the printer's fault. Uh, you have to do that initial setup. But it's incredible how well it printed, even though it was under extruding. The uh, spikes are all beautifully laid out, the, the split tail, the toes, uh, even the mouth with the tongue and teeth. Just an incredibly beautiful, technically extremely difficult print. It's not a perfect print by any means, and had the machine been fully calibrated, I would not really be satisfied with it. But considering that I used the PLA that came with the printer and the settings that the printer came with uh, out of the factory with no calibration, no changes, I just think it's an incredible job. So after completing the print of the Dragon, I calibrated the extruder on the machine and as I said discovered that it was under extruding by about 5%. I corrected that and then um, I loaded Maker Geek's translucent PETG orange filament. Um, I wanted to see how it handled a little higher temperature, I wanted to see how it handled PETG, PETG which tends to be stringy, just as a change from the original PLA. So I printed the lattice skull uh, pen holder cup and it's really a solid, nice, highly detailed print. Uh, there is a bit of over extrusion on it, I see little dots, and I was kind of puzzled at that. So I went back and looked at my slicer settings and realized that um, I was set at 103% flow. So that accounts for the face being a little more closed up than I ex uh, expected and some very tiny filament uh, over extrusions. But all in all, it turned into a really, really solid print. So continuing with the same filament, I decided to do some benchmarking, and I printed everybody's favorite Benchy. Uh, Benchy, as everyone knows, is a technically difficult print to get right. Um, there are a number of things that they set up in this print to test the printer's abilities, which is why they call it a torture test, and the QQ acquitted itself beautifully. The smokestack came out really well formed, which is a problem for a lot of printers because the nozzle stays close and heats up and uh, you have to have sufficient par cooling. The roof, you can see the texture on. Um, there's no real problem with, uh, with stringing or with uh, overhangs. Uh, there's no drooping. The arches are nicely done. The hole in the back, the drain hole on the bottom, uh, all perfectly executed. The prow is nice and clean. The holes, the portholes are round with no ghosting or ringing. Uh, the bottom shows the print that's embedded in it very clearly. Even the print on the back, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but even the print on the back is visible. I can't read it because I can't see that small anymore, but uh, I can see that it's there. So. 
All in all, this is one of the nicest benches I've seen, and it was executed with PETG. Um, just really, really well done. So continuing with the testing of the printer, um, starting with the bench sheet, I decided to print the Maker's Muse Original Tolerance Gauge. Uh, Angus Devison from Maker's Muse developed this a, num a while back and has, see has recently posted a new one that eliminates the tool and has handles, both of which can be gotten on Gumroad. So just to start with, if you can see, I'm not sure, on the top of the tool, is the Maker's Muse logo uh, in, engraved into it and it printed out clear and smooth really really well so that's the tool and the gauge itself has markings inside the embedded triangles showing the tolerances that go from a 0 0.5 to a 0 0.05 tolerance now when I printed this this, the 0 0.5 tolerance was no problem at all and actually uh, was free when I took it off the printer. The next tolerance down is the 0 0.4 which was also free as was the 0 0.3. The 0 0.2 I had to use the tool to free but it's free and it spins pretty well. Um, the next one down would be the 0 0.15, uh, which I could not get free. So somewhere between 0 0.15 and 0 0.2 is the tolerance of the QQ Delta, which is as good or better than most lower-end machines on the market, um, considering its price point of under $500. So I'm very impressed with it. So next I decided to print something a little more practical. Um, I had previously printed the version 1 coin sorter uh, in other materials on other printers, but the version 1 had a couple of issues with it. The pin wasn't well formed. It was attached to a large block that the coin sleeves uh, slid down into. It, just, it wasn't a, a, uh, a totally complete idea. So. I needed to update it and uh, he came out with a version 2 which is just instead of a full block just this piece but he had a removable pin which is the piece I guess that breaks most often and a slightly different hopper so I just reprinted with the same red PLA the uh, the sleeve holder the coin sleeve holder the pin and the hopper and I reused the coin uh, sorting tray and the uh, the uh, coin uh, sleeves and it's just incredible the the sorting tray has a perfect shape to it there's n virtually no artifacting it was printed to point uh, two layer height um, the hopper fits the the coin uh, sleeves perfectly even though they were designed on the prior model um, it just it just came out ideally you couldn't ask for a better print so my impressions of the FL Sun QQ Delta printer uh, on the pro side it is a solid all metal machine uh, easily assembled because it comes mostly assembled uh, it prints extremely well particularly for its price point as far as Delta machines go, it's probably one of the easiest and most thought out Delta machines I've used. On the con side, I don't like its leveling system. The, the need to use conductive paper means that uh, once you put the BillTac like sticker on top, you can't level the machine again. And if you want to try to remove that BillTac like sticker, it's difficult if not impossible to do so without removing the conductive paper. So you have to have spare paper around just in case you need to relevel. Thankfully because of the solid construction and the um, the fixed build plate you don't have to relevel this machine unless you move it, drop it, 
uh, you know, do something that's going to change the geometry. So it's not a huge problem. And considering the preciseness that the leveling system achieves, it's a reasonable trade-off. Would I recommend the machine? I would not recommend this machine to a brand new 3D printer. Um, I think that the requirement that you understand things like Z-probe offset and the like uh, puts it a little bit above the level of somebody who's just starting. However, if you've done some 3D printing, particularly on Cartesian machines, and you want to switch to a Delta machine, I would highly recommend it. Uh, the the construction and uh, just the general quality of the machine is far and above anything else approaching its price point, the ease of assembly, and the, the care that's taken in the materials uh, and in the configuration of the machine show that uh, it's, it's going to print for a long time with very, very few problems. And it is virtually silent. I can't stress that enough. It is so quiet. So, there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed the review. I hope I've been able to give you some information uh, that you find valuable. If you would like to see more of my uh, videos, please subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be coming out with some basic videos that I think people overlook in the, in the uh, industry. Um, I want to define the terms. Uh, what is the difference between an effector and an extruder? Uh, what nozzle do you use with what throat and why do you make those choices? What are the different types of, of uh, hot ends and uh, the different types of heat sinks and when you need one and, and that type of thing? Because I think everybody makes assumptions that these terms are self-evident or defined somewhere and they're not. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you in the future and thank you for watching.